We are here at Everything Electric, and if you watched our videos last year, you will remember that we had the good fortune to have a really long chat with the team from UBC, who do this awesome vehicle just here for Formula SAE. This year, we are joined by both the solar team and the UBC electric team, and so we're going to have a chat with both of them a little bit about what they've done in the past year and then more about what the solar team are doing. Joe, can I get you to tell us a little bit about what you do with the team? Absolutely. So I am the captain of this team this year and I'm super excited to basically coordinate all the different engineering talents uh, from across the team. We have about 90 engineers and so working with all of them to make sure they're getting the experience they want and coming together to build this amazing car. That's, that's pretty much my day today. And tell us a little bit about how the process works. Absolutely. So we build a new one every single year. And so with that, we kind of start in the concept stage around August, September. So this is last year's model. This year, we're starting on the brand new one, trying to figure out exactly how it's going to come together, what the new features are, what we're going to really devote our, uh, our money and time to this year. Um, so last year, that was the aerodynamic kit. We had a very prototype model. Uh, but of course, this year, we have the full kit. And next year, we're going to look at a four-wheel drive system, brand new battery pack. Those are our real, real big changes this year. So, as I understand it, you can carry some parts forward with Formula SAE and some parts you can't. What, which bits are you bringing forward and which bits are you trying to change? Sure. Uh, last year, we carried quite a bit. Um, most of our drivetrain and battery was largely recycled. Uh, this year is the ground up redesign for pretty much everything. Uh, so much so that we're actually planning to have this car and the next car running at the same time. Uh, because there will be so little carryover, there's nothing really to transfer. And so tell us a little bit about how the race team works. Sure. So the main deliverable is we head out to Michigan in June and we race against all the other universities from around the continent. So that's about 90-ish teams. Um, and as part of that, we have a straightaway acceleration, a figure eight uh, skid pad course, autocross fastest lap and 22 kilometer endurance race, which also has a big efficiency component as well. So with those races and the static competitions as well, what is it that you really feel is like the thing that each team member brings? You need such a diverse talent pool to get something like this done. And so we have, you know, of course the engineering talent, we have business talent as well. They have to help us manage our budgets and our sponsorships and our external relationships. So we really need something different from everyone to, to make this happen. Electrical, software, mechanical being the obvious ones as well. Yeah, so for those who don't know, as I understand it with Formula SAE, you are effectively imagining that a company has contracted you to design a vehicle. And that process, you're doing all of the parts of that yourself. Yes. Yep. So all design, all manufacturing is done by us in very rare cases for very complex parts. Sometimes we have to, you know, order those out to a different company, but that is rare. Pretty much all the welding, all of the painting, we do as much of it we can ourselves, all the electronics as well. And can you talk us through the specs of the vehicle as it stands? Sure. So this one, it goes zero to hundred in about 2.3 seconds. It's got a, a 360 volt battery. Uh, it'll do 80 kilowatts peak to the road and uh, it's about 22 kilometers range if you can really stretch it as we do during our endurance race. And 80 kilowatts might not sound that much. You know, we have vehicles now which have triple figures, yep. quadruple figures even. Yep. But when you look at this, you have to remember just how light it is. Yes. That's 80 kilowatts in how much weight? It's about 230 pounds before you put the driver into it. So it will, it will go quite quickly, um, yes, with just that little amount of power. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the power to weight ratio on that is astonishing. Absolutely insane, yes. And you drive it yourselves? Uh, it is one of the students on our team, or actually a handful of students on our team. Everyone gets to take it out in the parking lot just to, you know, drive it around. And whoever shows real promise in uh, their racing skills will take it to competition in Michigan and, you know, go against the other teams. But it is all undergraduate students. We cannot hire or otherwise recruit specifically for racing. It must be one of the engineers or business students. So do you have people in the team who've had prior racing experience? A little bit, yeah. Uh, mostly, you know, kind of more of the sim racing side of things. They'll uh, work on more of that. Uh, but yeah, we definitely have a little bit of, a few people have their racing licenses or they go to autocross tracks, especially like working on cars when they were kids, stuff like that. And have they said anything about the difference between driving this and driving a gasoline or? I mean, of course the pickup is just absolutely ludicrous. Um, it, it will get off the line so much quicker um, than any gas car. The other thing that's really, really kind of unique to this style of racing is your center of gravity is just so low to the ground. You're about three inches off the ground. Uh, and so as a result, your stability around turns is just so much better. Um, 
part of our competition is they actually tilt our cars up to 60 degrees, and even that will not tip the cars. So um, <laughs> that's it wild. Is, it is, yes. <laughs> That's like the old Land Rover test where you see them tipping. Right. And yep, and uh, they, they cannot go over even at 60 degrees, so they are remarkably stable machines. Thank you, Joe. So as I said, this year we are lucky enough to talk to both the electric team and the solar team, and we are joined by Peregrine here. Hello. Who is going to talk to us a little bit about what the solar team does and what they do on the team. So first up, what do you do on the team? So I am the, the vehicle dynamics co-lead. I take care of things like the braking, the wheels, suspension, and steering. I organize all the projects and I do a couple of design projects myself. What sort of design projects do you do? So for example, on this car are the uprights, which are components which act as interfaces for suspension as well as for the wheels and wheel hubs. I designed that and ran simulations on it until we could get it custom machined and installed into the car. That is awesome. So what does the solar team do in terms of competitions? So in terms of competitions, what we do is that we try to get basically as many laps as possible. We are a single occupant vehicle team. What we try to do is to, uh, is to make our car as light as possible so that we could go to the Formula Sun Grand Prix. There, we compete against other universities to gain as many laps uh, in a, on the track and to make sure that we make it on the top, uh, top teams. We made it around like six out of 24 on our last competition. That's very impressive. So how many laps were you doing in that time? So that time was 98 laps and each lap was around two kilometers. Wow, that's a pretty significant distance to travel. So with this vehicle, how does the design process work? So the way that it works is that we start off with just with concept generation and getting the overall idea of how we want this car to work, such as okay, well, uh, are we deciding on four wheels or three wheels? What kind of shape are we going? Are we going with a bullet shape or a catamaran shape? As well, and we take a look at the regulations that are established by the, organi by the organizers to basically run some really basic preliminary calculations to see if what we're planning to design will be sufficient to pass regulations. Once we get to that point, we start getting to more to the nitty gritty sort of stuff. Each sub-team starts designing their, their own components, so the chassis team starts designing the, the well, chassis. They, they do simulations for the roll cage, vehicle dynamics. We start calculating the suspension geometry and, uh, and start designing the components for that as well. Everybody basically gets all the concept generation done, then they, then they work together to make sure that everything works to, uh, fits together. After that point, we move into manufacturing and yeah, we, we built the car and go to competition. So how much of the manufacturing do you do yourselves and how much is stuff that you get from elsewhere? Good question. So it depends on the sub team. In vehicle dynamics, it's sort of 50-50. The wheel rims and the uprights are, are rather complex parts. They aren't something that we can do in the university itself. So instead what we do is that we con contract vendors outside of the university to manufacture these parts for us, even if we do the designs ourselves. However, for other components, such as the control arms and the steering, we make that, those completely ourselves. So you do the engineering and the manufacture in-house completely? Yes, that's that true. Your, your own team built that, or is that a separate part of the university that's built? So that's our own team. We'll, when it comes to welding, we'll bring in a different, we'll bring in a welder, since that requires that they're like a qualified welder. Mm -hmm. um, for other teams, uh, so for other teams, they might have a different degree of manufacturing, such as the aeroshell, this lovely aeroshell that covers our car. That is completely done by our team. Nobody else touches it. It is, it is definitely like our team sort of like passion project because it's, it took months to build and it was completely done by us, designed by us, manufactured by us. And so what materials is it made from? So it's made out of a twill weave carbon fiber with a Divina cell foam core. Twill weave is what goes on the outside. It's a sort of sandwich. Mm -hmm. Foam core goes in the middle. You, you, know, you cure it with resin and, and spend basically months putting it together in a mold. And once it's done and put together, you assemble it. I'm part of the vehicle dynamics sub team, so I don't know 100% of everything to do with the aeroshell, but given how much resources go into it, I definitely have learned a bit. Are you able to talk us through the specifications of this vehicle? Sure, a little bit. So 
I can tell you that the that the uh, that the area of the solar panels is around f uh, four square meters, which is the maximum allowed by regulations, and that our our arrays can take in six to seven amps on a sunny day, and that our uh, battery can store 5.4 kilowatt hours of energy. And how have you been doing in competitions? You said you came sixth out of 24? Yes, that's correct. And then what's your next steps with that? So our next steps are to go to Formula Sun Grand Prix next year with a lightened version of this car. We're going to be repla replacing components that, are, that we can see we can improve and make lighter so that our car is more efficient, so that we can do better in the next competition. And then after that, the next, uh, this next race, something that's called the American Solar Challenge, which goes across the US, that one, we're planning to re remove our space frame chassis and replace it with a monocoque. That way we'll be even lighter and we'll switch also to three wheels so we'll have less, uh, less rolling resistance, we'll be, we'll be lighter, we'll be more efficient, and thus we're hoping to be competitive in the American Solar Challenge. Well, good luck with that, that's awesome. Thank you. And thank you to both of you for joining us here today. And we will be back with more content from Everything Electric very soon. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Bree Crockford, Cap, Christian Buell, Everything on a Babagel, Pitcher Ian, and Brett Chandler. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Ko-fi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. Address is also down below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!